I'm Abdullah Kadir. My name is Juan Jose Herrera. Jeff Napoleon Baminjo. Paula Zuluaga. I come from Colombia. Aida Omot. I am Dela Clubi. I come from Ghana. Samuel Kimeo. Armando Mendoza. I'm Ingela Bahamadov. I am Hanao Sukranting. I come from Ghana. My name is Gubat Bayramov. I came from Azerbaijan. My name is Abu Bakar Kamara. But it's true that over the last 40 years, the oil sector has become much more environmentally sound. I mean, it gets complicated, you know, especially when you have a, a country that is not that institutionalized. The great mix that you have in the course, there are people representing government, companies, and also civil society organizations. And the fact that we are able to have discussion across the board, interacting with all these people, it is very, very enriching. Juan Perez, Pablo Alonso, the founder of OPEC, uh, for a long time the oil minister of Venezuela, he not only has the famous sentence considering oil the devil's excrement, but he also spoke of the oil booms of the 70s and in, in the 80s as a, a locura, as a, as a madness. The, the idea is, a, is, a, is an experiment um, based on a single idea which is that revenue transparency can deal with some of the problems of the resource curse. I don't want to make any excuses for the Indonesian government. There was violence, there was repression, there were serious, severe, uh, wrenching human rights, horrific human rights abuses that were part of this story. But in the aftermath, they decided to pursue a developmental path. Cameroon is another country where the, the company transfers revenues in excess of its costs uh, to the government. Really important that you escape from the slavery of having to spend all the revenues you get each year. In this moment, there are several big extractive industries, mining and oil projects that are under development. And I feel that when I am back in my country, I will be able to use the knowledge. Sierra Leone has an unfortunate experience about resource management. We've got huge deposits of natural resources but management of these resources have not been very helpful over the years. As Kenya prepares the ground, the legal framework and procedures and mechanisms for mining, I expect to make a contribution in, in, in that regard. I really want you guys to think against type. In other words, if you're a committed civil society uh, NGOist, I want you to become the oil company and really sort of try to get into the reasoning of the other uh, stakeholders in, in, in this mess. When we are working for natural resource sector, we should be thinking of the different perspective and not only from one single angle. And I like pretty much that we look into all of those different aspects and then we could go back to our implementation work and to look at the challenges with different glasses. I come from Africa and the capacity even in government ministries is not always, uh, this is not value judgment, it's not always uh, the best. And I think colleagues with whom I collaborate in various ministries, I will also recommend the course to them. It's very important to clearly define the NOC's role. We'll look at a couple of different roles they play. The background to establishing the National Oil Corporation was to help stabilize oil prices. We never had a mining national and in mining, we don't have information, we don't have uh, enough regulation. Norway is used as a sort of role model by a lot of developing countries. Fifty developing countries have asked Norway for advice. Subsidizing your own you know, economy, maybe it's not a very good thing, but uh, I think for a country that wants to have a diversified economy, it could be uh, a good way to subsidize. On paper, Angola has a very strong rule, but in practice, it is uh, poorly executed. An excellent experience for me to really be in a context where the students could challenge the professor. We could share our experience as practitioners, but also we could hear the feedback from academia that could help us to understand the challenges that we are facing. The quality of the lecturers were amazing. I think we had Mr. Professor Collier, he's a top-notch economist. I think just having a couple of hours session with him and just to understanding his viewpoint and then uh, it was pretty interesting. It's sensible to invest at home, but, and this is the very big but, one reason why a country like Sierra Leone 
is so short of capital in the country is that Sierra Leone lacks the capacity to invest well domestically. And if you try and spend without having built the capacities to invest well, you get a tragedy. Well, you better get the skills. Build the skill sets to manage the investment process. And that's what I call investing in investing. So the exercise is really about this, how much oil revenue the government will save and spend. The PIH rule calls for 3% of oil wealth. Revenue administration, macroeconomic analysis, which are relevant to my job and therefore I have acquired new knowledge that I will employ in doing my work back in Ghana. In Baku or in other countries, more or less we deliver the same issues, dedicated contracting, revenue management, diversification, sustainability, EITI. So uh, that's why uh, I found it very useful for me, for our region. We have um, several problems in the management of this uh, revenue and we want to develop our country out of this uh, sector of the economy. So where do we start? Uh, uh, well, I mean, that's a matter of your interpretation, but, right. but my interpretation is you take 11 years. With the new policy, there's a tendency for you to encourage growth in the other sector. Okay. Yeah. It sets incentives to build up the other sectors, right? Plus five years into the past, which are all zeros. Mm -hmm. You add them all together, divide by 11. Your job is not to jump on the bandwagon of politically salient but economically trivial. Your job is to try and educate ordinary people in what is economically really important but which they miss. I would definitely recommend the course for everyone in the different constituencies. To all stakeholders that are involved in natural resource management. Ministry of Mines, Ministry of Finance. To uh, government officials. One, to improve the technical knowledge in order to be better advocate for policies. Civil society leaders especially in Colombia, because we don't have a strong civil society. I would believe that uh, people who have opinions, who have clear indications and focus of, on what they want to achieve in society should participate in some of these things. Yeah. I think she's earned it. <laughs>